Good show so far. Fun. Fun. Wild. Lively. Lively. There's Wait. a lot to ask Schaefer about. Yeah. Hey, hey, our, introduce our. Well, I'm, I'm getting there. You can always watch your comment on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. You can call or text 464 5685. The show is sponsored by Gain of Trucking. This hour, though, on Thursday, mm-hmm. with our good friend Mike Schaefer, 24 7 Sports, is sponsored by Trek CBD, 84th and Highway 2. Schaefer, good morning. Good, good to see morning. you. Michael Schaefer. How are we doing? Well, we uh, have a we lot. Are, we have are, a lot we to talk swell. about. We have a lot to talk about. We do. We do have a lot to talk about. I, I want to mention real quick, if people are looking for, like, uh, late stocking stuffers. Ooh, okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, Trek CBD. Yes. You know somebody in your life that either wants to try CBD or, you know, uh, you, you already know that they like CBD and the effects of CBD. Go down to Trek CBD. Talk to, to Scott or Shannon. And, you know, what would you recommend? Ideas. What would you recommend for a stocking stuffer? Uh an Let's edible? See. Yeah, I mean that's that's the route that I prefer. But they also have stuff like drinkable, um, you know, drinkable seltzers. You could try one of those if that's more of your speed. And then that, you can kind of take your time with it, you know, with an edible. Uh, if you're like me, <laughs> you're popping that thing and you don't even think about it, and then a couple hours later you realize, hey, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, so um, it's a good idea, by the way. Stock yeah, it's stuff, just right? uh, it's a good way, and they have um, you know, they have plenty of price ranges and, and different things, and you're looking for your pet of course i've talked about this before uh the calming treats yes really we had that big storm that rolled through uh didn't didn't get in front of it mm-hmm. on the first half of it um loaded slider up with a couple calming treats smart he slept beautifully after that nice. it was wonderful everybody was happy my wife was happy because he wasn't on the bed freaking mm-hmm. out after what had just happened with the uh the heavy rain and and the thunder cap and then you know i was happy because she was happy where do you go? Spider was happy because he was asleep and he didn't know what was going. Where is this building? The Trek CBD. Eighty fourth and Highway Two, or eighty fourth and Andermatt, to be more exact. Eighty fourth and Highway Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. So, Schaefer, Schaefer was telling me that he can't wait for next Thursday because that means, hey, all the stuff with signing day will be you know, kind of done. Yeah. Right? I mean, there, it's like two less things to track. You know, like you don't have to worry about high school kids as much because they can't do anything really. Uh, now, little known fact, the signing period starts on Wednesday. What that means is it goes through Friday, but pretty much everyone is done by Wednesday yeah. afternoon or evening. Um, so there's that aspect of it. But then there's also not coaches' visits that you have to track. And then you can just sort of shift back to one of these things, the transfer portal, assistant hires, that sort of thing. So you're just cutting down the amount of work that we have going yeah, on, as true. you are uh, well aware of. Yeah, I didn't do much work yesterday. I better start doing some today. <laughs> so for those, it's cur- gotten kind of quiet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For those curious, so again, we're we're less than a week away from signing day starting. As mentioned, next Wednesday. Are you expecting a lot of buzz like the, today, this weekend? Like when do you start things start picking up again? So they're going to have some visitors come into town um, starting today. They'll have uh, other visitors coming in Friday. It looks like they're staggering it a little bit. So. You know, when you have these big visit weekends, that way Matt Rule can get to everybody. No one feels like they're left out. Everyone kind of gets a similar experience that way. And so I, I think, you know, with that, I mean, some coaches come off the road. Uh, it it kind of quiets things in that regard. But I would expect uh, some commitments this weekend. I would expect some noise this weekend. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what that visit list looks like. But right now you've got, a, you got another – quarterback on it and you got other things going on there that uh, people are going to be interested tell us about the quarterback from yes yeah. malik hornsby was a recruit that baylor went after in the class of 2020 so before matt rule left to go to to carolina um you know malik hornsby was somebody they were interested in because of his athleticism he ends up at arkansas he backs up i believe it's kj jefferson is a yes got it. Sip yes love sip loves kj yeah. jefferson yeah. big fan. um well, he's been very good for Sam Pittman uh, in Arkansas. And so he's actually coming back for another year. And so Malik Hornsby didn't want to back him up. So he goes into the portal. He's a really unique guy because some teams want him to be a wide receiver. He's very athletic. Um, he wants to play quarterback. And I would be curious if Nebraska isn't looking at this situation like, okay, get him. If he wants to come here and play quarterback, we can figure out what's going on with Casey and the rest of our room. We have this really athletic guy that if he can't play quarterback and play another position uh, and he's at least willing to do that as long as he feels like he gets a fair shake at attempting to play quarterback. So there there's some interesting things going on here. It's a 
it's almost like a way of giving yourself a backup plan to to Casey's um, situation if he were to choose to stick around, but you know he may not be healthy for the spring uh, or or what have you. It gives you another quarterback option if you just want to throw him into the room along with Smothers and Purdy and Harburg and Torres. Um, you know, so it's a it it would be a unique sort of thing, and it's a guy that they're familiar with, and again, he fits the sort of extreme athletic upside that we've seen them really sort of target here in December. Jeff Sims. So where does Jeff Sims fit in this conversation to Georgia Tech? Perha- yeah, perhaps I, he's an option at quarterback at, out of the portal. Right. I I don't know how that visit went because we haven't been able to to kind of reach him or his people to to see how that all went. Neither so, way, by the way. Um, you know and. I think people are surprised by that, but they shouldn't be because Mm -hmm. in my experience, guys in the portal largely don't want to talk like high school kids. One, they've already sort of done this Two, as uh, one guy relayed to one of our national analysts. I'm just focused on getting this done. It's nothing, you know, it's not like I don't want, it's just like my focus is on this and then I'll talk like get it done. Then I'll talk. And so, you know, that could be the situation for a guy like Jeff Sims. He was uh, here, though. Yeah, I know both offensive linemen that were in um, Lincoln last weekend, the kid that uh, from Rhode Island, the one from Arizona State, both of them told people that essentially, you know, after the process, we can go into it more, not really going to do visit updates, you know, as they happen. That, that's a... Uh... Cornelius, Cornelius, he, and uh, Ben Scott, a John ben, Cornelius, ben Scott. Ben Scott. Johnny, right? Is he Johnny? Oh, hold on, a, one at a time. A John Cornelius, yeah, I think that's right. Okay. From Rhode Island, Arizona. and then Ben Scott, yes, from Arizona State. Those are offensive linemen, Jake. If yeah. you had Nebraska, could really use to get one of those two, if not both. I mean, they could use whoa, both. Whoa. But what uh, a major coup it would be! be huge. Both. It would. It, it would make people that feel very uh, concerned about the offensive line and the direction of the offensive line at least take note and uh, feel better. You know, I, like, put it this way. You'd feel a lot better about those two if if Nebraska were to get them than last year where your transfer portal additions were Hunter Anthony and Kevin Williams. Yeah. So you're, you're the obviously in a tough spot when you have a coach hired – so late in the process. Yeah. Um, but That's why I think people signed so early. easy on what it looks like. So I'm going to ask you that. So in terms of right now, how it looks to you, how they've done in the first two weeks of Matt Rule being here with assistant coaches, and how, how does the recruiting so far look to you with the portal and high school kids from what they've done in such short time? Well, a lot of it kind of fits the narrative that they're going to definitely go after athletic upside. And a lot of it is they're simply targeting kids where they feel like they have a chance and they're passing on situations that they think are a waste of time. Okay. And, you know, that's a smart. Yeah. So the, the most valuable resource right now is time because there's a finite amount of it before this all has to end. And they can't be on, you know, goose chases. Like they, they need to target guys they think can actually commit. And maybe that limits. You know, the, the possibility that these guys are going to be contributors, but they're think of it like a sort of a lottery ticket. Like Bryce Turner is a lottery ticket. Bryce Turner, the receiver mm-hmm. from Bay City, Bay City, Texas. Yeah. And that's a guy that, you know, Nebraska went out. They're the only power five school that is offered. They're doing it because they view his his athletic upside as really, really high. And they can't teach speed, but they think they can teach him to be a wide receiver. Okay. Um, if it works. They've got a really unique player that can help them out. If it doesn't, the track team's got a good person. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's, it's essentially <laughs> Wheels, just like uh, they're they're taking some chances because they haven't had a, the opportunity to build these relationships. The, the running back would fall under that category too. Uh, Quinton um, uh, Ivis, Ivis, Quinton yeah. Ivis, and he might end up as a receiver. He's six foot two and a half, six three, uh, big frame, and so that he doesn't necessarily have the elite athletic measurables but his frame is really big and it's a guy that I think they think they can develop pretty easily, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot of confidence in their ability with Quentin Ivis. Ivis, Quentin Ivis. Maybe more so than Bryce Turner, who's just a very, very raw, you know, speed guy. Uh, I'm curious in terms of Matt Rule right now and going forward. Now, what if he doesn't recruit to what fans want to see is the level of a top 25, you know, ranking on 24 seven sports and but he finds a bunch of hidden gems it do you do you trust he'll he'll go with the ladder and find guys that maybe aren't ranked as high and well, fit them in the system so uh, it's it's funny because like 
Bryce Turner immediately gets ranked by 24 seven sports as an 88 in no short part, because right now anything Matt rule does people at 24 seven sports are pretty intrigued by. So he gets the bump. Uh, they get the bump. It, it's one of the, you know, it used to be a running joke that if a kid committed to Nebraska, you could just, you know, plan on his rating to go down. Uh, that's what people would say on the message board. This is one of those very opposite instances against uh, where a kid that, most people had never heard of in the recruiting industry, to be honest, like they unearthed Bryce Turner and he ends up as a, as a high three star right off the bat. And I talked with Andrew Ivins who recently was direct or named the director of scouting at 24 seven sports. And he's like, yeah, I mean, Matt rules one of those coaches that if we see that they're really locked in on a kid, we're going to reevaluate him. We're going to rethink our process hmm. on him. Hmm. We trust his evaluations based on what he did at Baylor. Mm -hmm. He made us look bad when he was at Baylor and at Temple. And then he goes on to rattle off all these different names of guys that are having careers in the NFL that were really productive college players. I mean, one of them, I think uh, Rule even talked about himself when he was talking about walk-on. Sasan Reddick uh, has been tremendous. Sasan Reddick has had a great he was a walk -on. He's yeah. a stud. He's a stud. Hey, um, now you're speaking Jake's language. I mean, this is NFL. development. This is development, right? Well, yeah, it, it's it's Not development. <laughs> I like that uh, language so too. <laughs> it's two things. I mean, I think anybody can see a guy as a really raw athlete, but can you see that and also figure out what you're going to do to unlock how he's going to get better as a player? And if this staff has that ability, then that's kind of what fans have been screaming yeah. for above all else. I, I really don't. This is like a probably a somewhat unpopular answer. I think most coaches have the ability to recruit a top 30 top 35 class at nebraska the resources are already in your favor you're going to have the ability to use the private jet that you need to to get your coaches around and you have now this 150 million dollar facility that uh i'm sure Sipple, who read coverage from from on three can tell you the same thing for us at 24 7 i'm sure it's the same for everybody they were taking people they, they put them in hard hats they took them through the the new building and people are ecstatic about what that thing's going to look like. And you have, you know, Marco Ortiz, a long snapper that committed telling Brian Christopherson that it's the best facility he's ever seen. He's coming from Florida where they have a brand spanking new one, you know, mm -hmm. just a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the, the resources and everything that you need at Nebraska is largely here. It's the ability to be organized and efficient and build relationships. And I think most coaches know how to do that. It's the gap of can you get it into the top 15? Like once we're talking about into the top mm. 15, you're talking about a different level. Because to me, 15 through or 16 through like 35, pretty marginal difference. Maybe one and a half players can really shake that up for you or whatever. And then some of it is just sheer numbers. I mean, if you only take 18 kids and yeah. Minnesota takes 28, then they might have a higher class than you, but they took 10 more players. So they're adding to their number more than you are. Uh, so it's, it, but if you get into that top 15, that's when I think you really see the difference, um, of being a team that has a, an actual shot at competing for things. In, in my opinion, Re regarding the staff and recruiting is obviously a big part of that. I mean, it's not completed yet, but we know Tony Isn't White. Isn't that wild? Yeah. It's not, completed there's still yet. three coaches left. This is, this is wild to me. Is it? Well, I mean, I can't think of a time in which I've covered Nebraska recruiting, which they've had this many assistant openings that haven't been filled mm -hmm. at this part of the the cycle yeah you don't seem concerned i i don't well know. i don't think it's if, a, if uh you know it would help them if they had an answer um there at, at some spot it seems like there has been times when there was openings that individually I, yeah yeah three it could be the the nfl is a factor in I, two I definitely think that it is at yeah. least for one at least for one not, of them you know multiple yeah i i think I'm not as I'm not really blown away by it, but um, it ha I, I, I honestly I'm not. I mean, I, I look kind of look. I kind of look at it like just have it named by February one or something. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, don't let this drag into the spring. And I wouldn't think that would happen. I, I wouldn't either. Um, I, I just honestly I don't know that there's a lot of times where there's been this many openings. So. Got to get a quarterbacks coach in here. Yeah. You know, and I know we, Jake Peets is not coming. No, that's that's about all I know. <laughs> he's not coming. Right. I mean, know he's here's not the thing. Here. It's hard to like people, you know, you hear from people say, why don't you who are the candidates at quarterbacks coach? 
I mean, Matt Rule doesn't just lay that out right. for you. <laughs> Here's to why I'm concerned. Well, right. They spent how many weeks thinking they had a guy to all of a sudden, yeah. all of a sudden they did Thursday. They didn't have a guy. Right. Week. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the market, what it's like for receivers coaches out there. I can't even name receivers coaches. I don't even know if I can name one receivers coach in the nation. Can you, Jake? You, you, I put you on the spot earlier, and we'll do this with Mike in a second. I'm trying to think of Big Ten receivers coach. I mean, I can definitely name one receiver. I could, coach. Keith Williams. Uh, well, I was going to go with the, the former Mark Whipple guy who's now at Texas. And that is? Brennan Marion. Okay, and then you could that. go I Kevin go Hartline, used to be at Ohio you, State. No, Brian Hartline. Brian yeah, Hartline. Kevin, yeah. Brian Hartline. <laughs> Brian Hartline. Brian I like Hartline. that you former just combined Dolphin. Kevin Hart with the wide receiver <laughs> coach <laughs> at Ohio did. State. Brian. Hey, Brian. former Dolphin, Brian Hartline, okay? Okay. Yeah, he was good. Okay, Brian Hartline. Uh, quick shift. I'm going to try with Mike what I tried with you earlier. Quick shift. Shift. <laughs> Name the final four volleyball teams. Wow. Louisville, Pitt, Texas, San Diego. Dang. Well, you did. I got one. <laughs> that was beautiful. Actually, I got I, I, my first guess was wrong. I said Wisconsin. <laughs> you said Wisconsin very definitively. So, well, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. No. <laughs> Then I got Louisville as my second yeah. guess, and then yeah. after that, I had nothing. He had one. Uh, my wife's uh, really into volleyball. Okay. And, I mean, obviously, Nebraska lost to, to Oregon, so I mm -hmm. was paying attention to see how Oregon did against Louisville, and I thought that they were going to win that, and Louisville came back. And then um, Is it five sets or not? That was five sets, five, yeah. Wow, okay. And then Pitt, mm -hmm. I was – I thought Pitt was really good last year, and so then I was kind of curious about them, and so I noticed that they had made it through, and she'd mentioned that Texas – and so – and then I saw San Diego had beaten Stanford. So I like seeing three of the results, and she had told me Texas. It's the Bam. only reason. Bam. Anyway, that's I will not. Today. I will not watch a single minute of the. And it's not because Nebraska's it won't be out. Good. It's in Omaha. We I don't. Just, yeah. There's too much else going on. Six p.m. tonight is the first match. Seven, you know, followed by the second one. Um, that is tonight in Omaha. Yes. CHI Health Center is what they're calling. I wonder what the crowd's like without Nebraska. Well, there. that's the big question. Isn't we will it? see. We'll yeah. see.